This is code.org, and I want to walk through how you can go about filtering a list using a number. There's a ton of data that we can make use of on code.org, obviously. I'm using the dogs one right now, but really any data set that you have numbers in, I don't know, what is this? Uh, sure, a crop yield, right? Or uh, they have Netflix movies, or they have uh, politicians in the year they ran. Anything with an integer, with a number, it's, it's a really great feature to add to an application to be able to filter or select using that number. So what I will do is I've selected the dogs a data set because dogs are the best. And I'm going to go ahead and demo how I could filter this list for dogs of a certain height. OK, so to do that, I'm going to head over to the code and first we're going to make a list. I need to go to my variables and grab the var x equals blank. And since we're using the data tab, make sure you have imported the data that you are using. I have already done so, right? I've clicked on dog, I clicked on animals, I clicked on dogs, and I hit import. It's why it's here. And with it imported, data and quacha. Okay. I'm just gonna say dog name, because I'm gonna have a or maybe I should say dogs names. I'm gonna have a list of dog names, shoes, dogs, what column? choose name. Cool. And then I want another list of their max height. Okay, so uh, dog height, I guess. And same deal here, get column dogs and max height. All right, what I want to do is make sure ooh, I misspelled that I first look for dogs only of a certain height. So the user is going to be able to enter a number here. I'm going to head over to UI controls and grab out on event. When the user enters a number, they're going to click the click me button. And I want to use the data they just entered. So I'm going to say click button. So on the event that the click button is clicked, I will go ahead and use a make a variable. And this variable for me will be input, or I could even say num input maybe. If you want a global variable, if you would want this to be accessible anywhere, you could put it up here and set it to a default value if you would like. Okay. But regardless, I need a, if I do it that way, I then down here wanna say num input is equal to and I want to grab the text in this box. However, since we're doing numbers, there's a special thing for this. It's called get number. The difference, get text will grab items as a string. So anytime a word is in quotes, right, that is a string. And what I mean by this is, where's my council log? So right here, I want to demo this real quick. If I hit run right now, message is going to be output to the council, right? But if I hit run without the quotes, it's going to give me an error because it doesn't know what message is. It's looking for a variable. Anything with quotes is a string. Without quotes, it's either a variable or you can do a number directly. And that's what we're going to do. We want to get the number because I'm going to be comparing it to other numbers. So get number and the number ID. Well, let me reset so I can see a num input is what I did in design mode. My ID for that one is num input. All right, so num input it is. Now I grab the user info, but I need to do something with this. So I want to find the max height they want a dog. Okay, so maybe I should actually, to make this more clear in design mode, I'll say enter max height. All right, and I'm gonna use their entry to filter. So I'll need a for loop. Now, keep in mind how this will work. A for loop starts at zero and goes all the way up right now to four. So let's council log this out so we can see. I'm just going to put an I here. Oh, I have to click the button to make this run right on event. And there we go. Notice it prints zero, one, two, three. Well, it doesn't actually print four. So what this for loop says right now is I is set equal to zero. It's what we're going to use to count. I is less than four. 
add one to i each time we loop. That's what i plus plus means. So i is zero, is zero less than four, true. And so the loop runs and it prints out zero. We hit the bottom, go back to the top. Oh yeah, add one to i. So i used to be zero, zero plus one is, well, one is one less than four, true. And so we drop down, print out one, hit the bottom, zoop. Okay, oh yeah, add one to i. Okay, well, i was just one, i is now two. Two is less than four, drop down, print out two, hit the bottom, back to the top. Two plus one is three, three is less, print it out, hit the bottom. Three plus one is four, four is not less, and we're done with this loop. The great thing about this is arrays or lists are indexed at zero. And what I mean by that is we start counting the items in the list at an index of, well, zero. Here, let me show you. So if I do num, uh, nope. I'm gonna do dog name, and then I'm gonna put where in the list I want. This is gonna print it four times because it's in this loop that goes four times. Click, right? And what is this doing? Well, it's printing the dog at dog zero. In the data, this is gonna be labeled one. But in terms of a list, in terms of computers, we don't start with one, we start with zero. So the second thing is one. The third thing is two. You really want to keep that in mind. All right, so that being said, we want to look at the whole list though, not just for items. How we can do that is using the list's name and dot length. What that will do is, and I want to look at, actually I want to look at dog height, dot length. What this will do is allow me to loop through the entire list. So I must be less than the total length of the list, which is perfect because if the list has three things in it, I would have to be less than three. We start I at zero, which would mean zero index, one index, two index, right? And that would be the first three things. And then I would be equal to three, three is not less than three and it's done. So now we can go through the whole list. Let me show you, I'm gonna put I here. Oop, what do we got here? Dog's name dot, oh, I misspelled dog height. Yikes, technical difficulties. Boom, and there we go, the whole thing. So what a filter does is you want to make a new list using a select piece of data. So you want a new list using a piece of data. Okay, well, to do that, to select some item from a list, I'm gonna use an if statement. So I'm looping through all the data now and I can put it all out here, but why does that matter? It's the same list I already had. So now I want an if statement, and I'm gonna actually make a unique list. So in some of their examples, they use this and they will call it like, um, for instance, they'll say dog's name or filtered dog's names, okay? And I'm just gonna set this equal to an empty array or an empty list and that looks like that. So, hey, this is the list, it's equal to nothing. Now, what do I want to use this list for? Well, I only want to add list names to this list if it is less than their max height, right? There, the user's going to put in a number for the maximum height. I'm going to loop through each item in the dog's list. Now I need the if. So the only way I'm going to allow the dog's name to get added to my new list is if math I'm going to say the height has to be less than. I guess I could do, I'll do less than or equals to. So I'm going to say the num input that the user entered. I want to look at that. And I want to make sure I'm going to use my dog height list, dog height i. And whatever i is, it will start at one, just as we showed you, or starts at zero and goes all the way through. So if the dog's height at i, at zero, at one, at two, is less than the input they entered, then I know that dog should be on our list. So I'm looking at the dog's height, but then when I want to add to my dogs filtered by name, I'm going to use their names. I don't need to save the height right now. I just wanna make sure that height is good and then add their name to my list. To do that, we use something else called append. If I can find it. Oh, right here. And append just means add on to my list. So my new list, filter dog names, I'm going to put, oh, wait, list. Yes, I'm going to put here, right? Notice it's not in quotes. I also don't need this in quotes because it's going to be the variable. What variable will it be? 
well, if I have found that my dog height list at say at one is less than the number they entered, I want to add that name. So, and let's actually look at the data because this is definitely complex. So we'll say I entered for a dog height, uh, max height of, sure, max height of 30. So we get to the Afghan hound and the computer says index one, because remember zero one, index one is less than 30. So what will it do? Well, if dog height at one was less than 30, right? Because we're saying I input 30, it is, it's 27. Then what do we do? Well, we're gonna add to the filter dog's name list. What are we gonna add? We're not gonna add the height. We have the dog's name list. And we know if the height at that position at index one is less than 30, we'll also at index one of the names list is that same dog. Or at index zero, if the height is less than 30, then I wanna add the name at index zero of the name list to my new filter list because I want to save their names as I'm going. And that's what this will do. So dog's name, I. Now this isn't going to show us the names. This is just going to create a new list. I can prove to you that it's working though because I can do a watcher on it. I'm just going to copy, paste it down here. And, oh, let me zoom back in. Okay, and let's hit run. Now I'm going to hit 15. And so now my filter dogs list has 25 items. And I can watch this work if I slow it down here. And let's do it again. Oh, it's not gonna, I should have blanked it out. Click. So on click, and we can watch it run. It's gonna make the input, and now it's going through the loop. There it goes. Four, okay, first thing. So, and I can also track I here. Okay, so our index two, yep, that dog had to have less than 30, and you can watch it build out our list, okay? Now that we have this list though, we have found all the dogs less than the height they entered. What do we wanna do with it? We can do all sorts of things with it. So maybe I wanna print them all out, right? But really, I'm probably gonna to wanna to narrow it down. So maybe I have a dog picker, I don't know. And so at the end of this, I could do something like mm, set text way down here. Now, what do I want to set the text of? I'm going to say output area. Okay. And I don't want to print out all of them, right? Because I filtered it down. But what I'll do is, I don't know, I'll say random number. So I'm going to say, uh, I want to use my filtered list. So filtered dogs name, boom, boom, okay? And then what number do I wanna use here? I wanna use the random number available to us right here. I can even, oh, I can just type it in for now. You could drop it in. And I wanna use random number zero to, I don't know how long, how long is this list? Well, thankfully I can use length like we already did. So I'm gonna say filtered, I'm gonna switch to text mode. I'm gonna say filtered dog's name dot length. And honestly, it might be easier to read, and I think it will be, uh, if I do it this way. So I'm gonna use a variable. Bar R and D for random equals that. And then I wanna use this random number that I just made here, right there. Okay, let's take a look and I can explain. So now I make this whole list of dog names. And all my filter dog name has are dogs bigger than the user input. Once I do that, I'm making a random number variable and I'm setting it equal to zero to the length of the list. This is an error though, cause the index, it only goes to the length of the list minus one. Since we start counting at zero, we're gonna need to take one off of the length to make sure that item actually exists on the list. Then I use that random number to output a suggestion for a dog. So I don't know, maybe I want a dog that is less than 15 short. Let's see if this is anything. Oh, speed that up. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna, it does this sometimes. I'm gonna make sure to 
change back to block mode and I'm gonna refresh my screen just to make sure we're good. Okay, so let me try again. Run and 15, boom. And so what it's doing here is I have this whole random list still, but I'm grabbing one number from it and I can show you again using watchers. Here's everything in my list. And then I use random number. And again, this is why watchers are so handy. Let's see what my random number is. Oh, it's a local variable, so I can't see it. Just kidding. But then I use random number to push one of these out for a suggestion. And this is how you can use filtering. Of course, you want to do something much more interesting than this. I would also recommend if you're going to have your app used multiple times, I would, so on click, if I'm going to create a new list with this on click, then I would definitely want it to have a mechanism for clearing this list. So each time they use it, I want to make sure this list is empty. And to do that, I'm just going to say this and say empty again. So every time they click the button, we will empty the list so it doesn't double up. Boom. You, now you know what type of dog you need. Anyways, I hope you do something super, super cool with this and use it to filter our sorts of stuff. You could do something by year even, or um, I mean, there's endless possibilities. If you do want to output the names while you're going through, inside of the loop, you could also put a set text. Just make sure you're adding as you're going so it doesn't cover each other up. Or you could do something like this. This also, keep in mind, might be good to use for a function because you might be using this code elsewhere. And if so, make sure you use a function for it. I hope you build a really, really awesome app.